For our final presentation of the evening, I would now like to introduce a very important CED partner and a true business statesman. To provide this presentation, David Cody is the chairman and CEO of Honeywell. Aside from being a highly successful chief executive, Dave is thoughtful and engaged business leader on some of the toughest economic policy issues facing the nation. Dave served on the President's Bipartisan National Commission on Fiscal Responsibility and has been an active spokesman with CED and other groups calling for fiscal restraint. For these reasons, Dave received CED's Business Statesmanship Award last year, and we couldn't be prouder of the work that he's leading on fiscal health and responsibility still today. It's with great pleasure that I now welcome to the stage Dave Cody. Well, at CED, as you know, we have a 70-year tradition of saving the best for last. <laughs> so I'm pleased to be able to honor tonight Wes Bush of Northrop Grumman, who's receiving the Committee for Economic Development's Corporate Citizenship Award. Wes is a good friend and colleague. I was privileged to work with him when we were both at TRW, and we continue to interact through our businesses and our shared commitment to our communities. And I want to thank the CED for honoring him with the Corporate Citizenship Award. He is truly deserving of the recognition for the outstanding work he's done at Northrop Grumman. And Wes has used his platform as a business leader to make education a top priority at Northrop Grumman. Across the nation, we see troubling statistics regarding the number of students who are interested in science, technology, engineering, and math, otherwise referred to as STEM careers. And this growing shortage of talent in our workplaces is also a real problem for the nation. The United States must refocus on math and science education. We need more engineers, not more lawyers. We need that Sputnik moment that mobilizes our kids to be engineers. Yeah, that one got you. <laughs> Most innovation and productivity comes from engineers and technology. And just for some alarming statistics, in 2007, the U.S. graduated about 450,000 U.S. citizens as engineers. China graduated about 950,000. And that's with only about one-third as many college-age eligible kids going on to college on a percentage basis. Which means when it equalizes, China will graduate about 3 million engineers per year to the U.S.'s 500,000. Science-based expertise is the heart of our high technology culture, society, and economy. The next generation of engineers and scientists in the United States are crucial to continued prosperity and our way of life. With Wes at the helm, Northrop Grumman is focusing resources on education programs, especially in the STEM areas. He understands that supporting STEM initiatives is critical for U.S. competitiveness. So they have embraced programs that will help build a diverse employee pipeline of skilled and educated workers. Wes is also active with the Business Higher Education Forum, or BHEF. In fact, he recently became that organization's chairman after having served as vice chair for several years. The BHEF is dedicated to promoting innovative solutions to U.S. education and workforce challenges, and is composed of prominent business leaders, university presidents, and other community leaders. Through his leadership at the BHEF and partnership with other organizations, including the Committee for Economic Development, which is also deeply dedicated to educational excellence, STEM, and post-secondary reform, Wes is keenly focused on helping young people become college ready, have access to post-secondary institutions, and achieve success. I know Wes well, and he is a doer. He is actively out in front of this issue, and not just in the form of speeches or philanthropy, but in building partnerships in making these things happen. He believes in partnerships that are innovative, collaborative, and successful. He's the kind of corporate citizen that we should all strive to be. Wes sets an example that we can all follow and be proud of, and I'm delighted to be part of this terrific recognition. I will also say that once you know Wes, he may not be the youngest CEO ever honored here, but he will certainly always be the youngest looking CEO ever honored here. Wes, please join us on stage.
All right. Well, I will tell you, it is incredibly humbling to be honored with the group of honorees here this evening. Uh, in fact, when I first got the call from Dave to talk about this, I said, you know, that's, that's more than we should be recognized for. But as I thought about it, the recognition this evening is really for the employees of Northrop Grumman. Because as proud as we are of the work that we do in STEM education all across the country, we're in every state in the United States, we're proud of the work that we do from a philanthropic standpoint, where we give a lot of money, we launch a lot of programs. Uh, we're proud of the work that we do on the policy side and helping promote the policies that are needed to drive STEM education. But we're most proud of the volunteerism of our 70,000 employees who get out into the classrooms and make a difference. And that's what this award is about this evening, taking action, oftentimes one-on-one -on -one with students, to really make a difference. We have a great team of people in our company, individuals who are engaged in developing some of the most innovative solutions that are out there to help every day our military servicemen and women around the globe to conduct their vitally important mission, a mission that all of us here this evening rely on. And let me add in recognition of Veterans Day our thanks to all who have served in that important mission. So I'm really proud of the work that our team does, both in terms of the mission of our company and the work that we do from a volunteer perspective. You know, we're a company like any other. We're focused on performance. We want to be the very best at what we do. But from our perspective, performance only counts as if, if it's sustainable performance. And sustainable performance derives from a core set of ethics and values in any organization. We all know that. For us, one of those very important values is building the future. And to build the future, from our perspective, we have to be making those investments in education. And STEM education in particular, all of education is really, really important. But to Dave's point, if we think about the engine that drives technical innovation and really growth in our economy, STEM education is right at the heart of that engine. And we have got to make progress faster and in a more focused way on that driver of such an important engine. So ultimately, we have a real opportunity here, and I know I'm preaching to the choir this evening. Uh, the number of individuals who stood up and talked about education was really heartwarming. And the work that the CED does itself in promoting education is just fabulous. But we all have this opportunity, because this turns out to be one of those things we don't have to wait for congressional action to go do something on. <laughs> we can do it ourselves. And taking an action orientation towards education is a responsibility of business. The Business Higher Education Forum is another example of work that's being done by business leaders coming together with those who lead academic institutions across the country to develop specific programs to take actions in communities, one community at a time around the country. That's what we all can do, but we have to be focused on it, we have to be committed to it, and we have to bring that energy and passion that we all know is there with our employees who want to be involved in this. So again, just to, just to reflect on this award itself, I feel fabulous that this type of work is being recognized. But I think it's also important to understand that any time an award is given, it also recognizes that we're not done with something. We have a lot of work in front of us. So I would ask all of you to think about that, to, to take that challenge for taking action, not just on the policy front, not just encouraging others to do things, but using the resources of your corporations and those tremendous resources of your employees to make a difference in education. Thanks, everyone.